Well, hello, my name is Ashley Perry, and I'm from the Fort Myers Seventh-day Adventist Church. And as you know, we have a Monday night Bible study from six to seven on the topic of prayer. And we thought it would be very helpful for you to hear from prayer warriors all over the United States. And Bob and Bevel of are very good friends of my family. Um, they worship together in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and they've been very instrumental in my healing because I know they've prayed for me multiple times throughout the years. So we definitely wanted to interview them to get to know them, um, to pick their brains about like, how do they pray? What suggestions do they have? And maybe they'll even share some answered prayers. So Bev and Bob, thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you don't mind just telling us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, um, what you're like, what you like to do. Okay, my name is Beverly Lafave. I'm married to Bob Lafave. We live in Hudsonville, Michigan. Um, we belong to the Grand Rapids Central Church for the last 60 some years. And in many ways, we've been blessed and the Lord is good. My name is Bob Lefebvre and uh, Bev and I met and have been married 62 years. We have two children. We have five uh, grandchildren and five great grandchildren. And uh, we actually are like the seventh generation Seventh day Adventists. However, when we were both living at home, my father was a Catholic and my mother was an Adventist and Bev's mom was a Methodist and her father was also Catholic. So when we got married, uh, my mom and dad said, uh, when you grow up, you can go to what church you choose to. Mm -hmm. But however, they would take us to church occasionally one Sometimes a Catholic church, sometimes the Seventh-day Adventist church. My father would take the people going to the Catholic church, and of course my mom would go to the Adventist church. Uh, but what solidified me as to making a choice was my father. My father, when I was probably about six years old, was in the kitchen looking out the window. My mom and dad argued religion a lot. And uh, he was standing by the window after he had an argument and my mom had left the room and he was looking out the kitchen window and he said, Saturday probably is the right day to keep. Well, that put it right into my mind that the uh, Adventists were right. So I knew growing up, that's what I would be. And Bev, why don't we tell him about this? Um, I'm the first generation Adventist. Um, I met Bob and um, we only live about three blocks apart uh, and he told me about the Seventh-day Adventist Church. When he went into the National Guards, I at that time was 17, I, I went down to the Central Church by myself to check out what Seventh-day Adventist was and um, I was just convicted that that was the truth. And Bob and I were both baptized together in 1961 on the corner of Kalamazoo and 28th Street in a tent meeting by Henderson and Walters. Walters. But we prayed before joining the church, of course. And prayer has everything to do with where we're at today. Amen. Amen. Wow. I was wondering how you met. So thank you for answering that. That's ex congratulations, 62 years. Thank you. You said five <laughs> children and five grandchildren or was it three children, five grandchildren, and five great-grandchildren? Two children, five grandchildren, and five great-grandchildren. Wow. Well, congratulations. And I'm sure in your 62 years together, you've seen a lot of answered prayers. Um, if you don't mind sharing, does anything stand out to you? Sure. Um, I probably first like to go back to when I was still at home. Um, I had been reading the Bible, but I had no real direction in my life. Um, my father was a Catholic, so I would go to church with him once in a while, but it never seemed to solidify in my mind that that was the right place to be. So I remember reading the Bible that you have to go into the closet and pray. Now this shows how, what a baby I was at the time in Christ, but I would go into my closet in my bedroom and I would ask the Lord to just lead me in my life's plan. And it wasn't too long after that, that I met Bob and um, we became praying partners together after we got married. And our daughter, 
uh, who was the second born, was born with a congenital hip. And um, we had gone to have her checked at the pediatrician. He had explained to us what was wrong with her. And she had been born without a hip, uh, hip socket and without um, a ball, really. The ball was the size of a pea. And so she couldn't walk. So we put her in a cast, a body cast. And after seven months of in a body cast, we took her there in Thanksgiving to see the doctor. And he said, it hasn't done any good. There's no reason that, you know, we need to keep her in this anymore. So we had been praying and praying. And he said, there's only one option that a doctor from Canada could come and do the first type of surgery on her hip. And then we'll just see where it works and how it goes. So we prayed and by God's grace, she came out of that. And she walked with that hip for 35 years until it finally wore out and she had to have a hip replacement. But all through her life, she knew that God had touched her. And we knew because we went back to see the bone specialist after we had prayed about this. And he had told us that she would be in a lot of pain and we would have a lot of problems. So we came back that next spring and he said, I wonder why you haven't called me. And I said, well, Dr. Jones, she's not in any pain. He said, well, that, that doesn't seem right because that hip isn't healing the way it should. Let me take the x-rays again. And when he took the x-rays, the pictures were smooth as glass. And before that, they were all fuzzy and the bones didn't look healthy at all. So that's just one in the many ways is small and big that God has heard our prayer. He also said that if the x-ray didn't come back clear, they'd have to reoperate and take all those bones out of there because they were dead. But God healed her. Well, that's incredible. I'm so thankful. I think I've, I've met your daughter once. Does she have three children? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Wow, that, that's incredible. <laughs> Are there any times yes. where you've been praying for something and God didn't answer it the way that you wanted? And if so, how did you get through that process? Well, currently I'm praying and a lot of people in this country are praying for my wife. Mm -hmm. She's been dealing with uh, severe pain mm -hmm. for about six years now. Mm -hmm. uh, she started out with pain in her uh, belly, mm -hmm. and uh, she, I'll let I'll let her tell you. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Six years ago, I wound up with a lot of pain in my back, and I went to see the doctor with my husband, and um, he said, "Beverly, we took X-rays of your back," and he says, "You're going to need a fusion." He says, "Your back is really, really bad." And he said, if you hadn't been a healthy person exercising and eating as well as you have been, I would tell you to go home right now and just, you probably would be laying on the back, your back for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. But because you're such a healthy person, I will do the surgery. And he did it within a week. Prior to that, I had been laying on my back for a month mm -hmm. on my living room floor with my church bringing in food and constant prayer. And I had the pastor come and anoint me. And I had the pastor come during the surgery, before the surgery, and he prayed. And we did the fusion. And I came out of that, and it turned out beautifully. But all through the six years, I've still been going through pain. I've had a hip replaced. Um, now I've got cervical spine issues where my um, cervical spine is fusing on a nerve. And he didn't want to do surgery on that. So I lived with that daily. Mm -hmm. And then last October, I started having pain in my hip. And they thought it was my left hip because my right hip was replaced. And he says, no, your left hip is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So the last year we've been going through tests and PT and injections. And many people have been praying for me to be out of that pain. And my last injection hasn't worked beautifully. But you know what, Ashley? I'm just saying that it did work beautifully. I'm still in pain. I'm still able to get up. I'm still able to take care of myself. My husband is doing the cooking and keeping us together. So God has the plan. 
We don't know what it is, but God is still answering prayer. And we're looking forward for this one to be answered. <laughs> Believe me. I'm sure by you sharing, that will encourage a lot of people at church because I know some of them have been praying for recovery for years and it's just not coming. And, and they're faithful Christians. They love Jesus. Um, but for whatever reason, it's not coming the way that they expected. So, oh, we will definitely pray at the end of this for your recovery as well. But thank you for sharing that. Is there like something that holds you together, that brings you through? We know devotion and devotions are so important. Um, if you don't mind sharing, is there something that you like to do in your devotions? Um, do you have a certain format? Do you do something different every day? Oh, we usually. Uh, but you have your certain purpose in the morning. Hmm? You have your certain purpose in the morning in your devotions. Oh. I do. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. But you get up every morning. Oh, I we 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 study, mm -hmm. and uh, I right. every morning I get up early. I used to get up at five o'clock every morning. Since I've retired, I don't get up quite that early. Okay. But before I go to work, I would get up and have my Bible study, and I'd study for about forty-five minutes or an hour. And included in that would be, of course, the Sabbath school lesson, the senior Sabbath school lesson for the week. And uh, so I spent time in prayer and study in the morning and still do. We started that habit years and years ago. Mm -hmm. And then I would go out and I would run or jog. And I did that until I was 70. And then I injured my Achilles tendon. So I had a lot of pain. I couldn't run. I waited a couple, five, six weeks. I thought I'd try running again. It's flared up again. So since I was 70, since I've been 70, I'm 86 now. I walk every day and I'm really fit as a fiddle. Are you share your faith? Uh, and I had opportunity to share my faith now walking. Running is pretty hard. Because you meet people walking like you're walking. Just recently, my, my daughter-in-law got in a real bad accident. They live in New Hampshire. She walked across the parking lot in one of those big four-wheel drive pickup trucks, ran over uh, my daughter-in-law, and she was drugged under the truck for, I don't know, 50 feet, 60 feet. And then he went to the end of the park, came out, turned around, came back. And she was all crumbled up. She didn't have any injuries to her head, but the rest of her body, she shattered two vertebrae in her back, number one and number two. And she uh, had uh, uh, eight broken ribs. And Chris said that they were shattered and she had a punctured lung. And she had all kinds of abrasions. And this happened six weeks ago. And so we've been praying for that as well. A lot of other people have been praying for that. And you, Ashley, you may know her, Deanna. Uh, you're, they, she went to school with your mom and dad in Massachusetts. I don't think so, but okay. I know my mom has been praying for her. So I know her that way because my mom is praying for her. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, she had to be flown by helicopter to a to hospital and they did operation. And she's coming along fine, but uh, we just talked to Chris a week ago and he said that she can't do anything for 60 days yet, but she is walking and she's recuperating. Okay. So, and as far as my devotions, um, Ashley, um, I've always uh, studied the Bible every day, um, and also the Sabbath school lesson. Um, but since this experience, um, the last few years with my pain, I put on a new type of schedule mm -hmm. and I do my Sabbath school lesson in the morning and have my study time. But then throughout the day, I find that I'm more strengthened mm -hmm. if I go into my quiet place and just have a time of prayer with God, whatever might be on my heart hard at that time or maybe there's nothing really pressing but I just go to him and just thank him for the day 
And then during the evening, before I go to bed, this was never really my habit. Um, but now I'm taking either Christ Object Lessons, which I've read through, or Spirit of Prophecy, um, Desire of Ages. Mm -hmm. And then I read three or four pages of that, have my prayer, and go to bed. And um, I just feel that as we pray, the Lord knows what's going to happen in the future. And just like with Deanna, those prayers said beforehand are the ones that protected her from being paralyzed or killed outright. Um, God has a plan for everybody and it's all different, but Bob and I have always been faithfully connected to God in our prayer life, our devotional life, and in our study of Mrs. White's writings. We don't put her before the Bible, but we certainly do study both of them. And we have family worship as well. Mm -hmm. Every evening we, uh, read a devotional or read Bible passages and pray and pray for our neighbors. In fact, one of our neighbors was uh, diagnosed with breast cancer and she has three little girls. We became very close to our neighbor and she's always admired us for our faithfulness. And so she got this cancer and uh, she came to me and she said, well, I need prayer. I said, okay, well, I'll, we'll pray for it. No, I want you to come over and have a prayer service just for me. I said, okay. So I was an elder in the church at the time. And so I went over there and anointed her and prayed for her cancer. And she's walking around the day cancer free. And it was a, and that really impressed her. In fact, that was how many years ago, Beth? Probably about eight now. And when we went over Ashley, she had the whole neighborhood, a lot of the neighborhood people there. So Bob and I walk in, we think we're just going to join a prayer service. And then she says, well, Bob, you're an elder. Could you kind of just take over the meeting? Mm -hmm. And so God just took over and we all took turns praying. I remember that night, there were people from all different uh, mm -hmm. faiths um, crying and praising the Lord. And from then on, we met a friend of Danielle's. This is the neighbor of ours who got breast cancer. And then Danielle had us to go over to her house and pray with her. Now there's two endings, Ashley, because Danielle was healed through the surgery, through God's healing, but Shannon Weber was not. Our Sabbath school class went up there, sang Christmas hymns at that time. And um, Bob and I went and visited her for a while and she died. But she belonged to a large church and our pastor was asked to put on that celebration service as they call it in their church. And so all things were together for good to in, in whatever situation. So God uses us and other people to share his love. And just recently, uh, since Deanna's accident, I meet people on the, my walk in the morning. I'd stop them and I would ask them, would you please pray for my daughter-in-law? And they'd say, of course, you know, what's her name and what happened? This one man, I've only met him once or twice, but I know he's a Christian because he invited me to a Bible study. And so I stopped him. I said, Ron, I says, my daughter-in-law just was in an accident yesterday. Would you mind praying for her at your Bible study tonight? Of course, he says, I'll pray for her. What's her name? He said, well, let's pray right now. Here we were standing alongside the road. And it's like uh, six o'clock in the morning. He put his arm around me and I put our arm on his shoulder. And he prayed for, for Deanna. Mm -hmm. And I see him now and they say, well, how's Deanna doing? And a, a young a lady that that same day I met and I told her to pray and she's praying and she keeps asking me, how's Deanna doing? How's Deanna doing? I keep praying for her. I can't get her out of my mind. So <laughs> sharing these events with people, strangers, mm -hmm. uh, they know you're a Christian too when you do that. I know it's, it must be hard because my husband's a runner as well. So to have to give up running 
I can only imagine how painful that was for you, but looks like God clearly yeah. had a purpose. You bring up a good point. You're reaching so many people <laughs> walking. You would have reached otherwise. <laughs> yeah, that's right. true. That's true. Ashley. Now I noticed you two, um, what I like about you and what my parents really appreciate about you is you pray for a lot of people on a daily basis. And as Christians, myself included, it's easy to pray for myself, my family members, those near to me. Um, but what about you? How do you expand your prayers? Um, if you feel yourself just praying for those close to you, um, is there something that you could do or something you suggest, like ways to expand our prayers? Well, I think one of my ways that the Lord helped me with that is as I move from neighborhood to neighborhood. Now, I've been in this neighborhood for 30 years, but over the years, Bob and I have moved. And I've always connected with the neighborhood ladies next door to me or across the street. And I try to just get to know them on a personal basis. And as I do that, I find out that they have issues in their life, just like we all do. And then I just start praying for them. And then I let them know that I'm praying for them. And then we hear sometimes answers to prayer. Sometimes it doesn't even open up a relationship. But I would say probably over the last several years, um, I think my prayer warrior thing is experience has expanded because of my neighbors and I'm getting to know them like Danielle. Now I have a wonderful prayer warrior. Um, she belongs to a different church um, and we pray for each other and our families every day. And she now calls me her sister because we're sisters in Christ. You know, we have maybe a little bit different view on things, mm -hmm. but that's how I become a prayer warrior to break out of my own family and um, extended family, just to get to know people, to find out what their life is about. And then as I add them to my prayer list, mm -hmm. then I can see God answering prayers. So I make a prayer list. My husband doesn't. He gets up in the morning and he remembers all these names <laughs> and he prays for many different people. So I have to write them down, but Ashley. <laughs> so that's how I do it. So do you have any favorite um, Bible verses on prayer or any quotes on prayer, or anything that stands out? Oh... One of my favorites is uh, Isaiah 26, 3. Um, <laughs> I can't even remember. What it is. Oh. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. I can't remember now, Ashley. Thou will keep oh, him no, in perfect peace. Thou will mind. keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. You got it. The, that's it. That's it. Yes. yes. And Isaiah 118, I like. Yeah. And, that, and of course, that says... Uh, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. So I figure when we're praying, that's what we're doing. We're reasoning together. Mm -hmm. Oh, those and are my, great verses. And what were you saying, Beth? My, my new, yeah, I just say one added verse that I've just done in the last probably month, because I noticed that I'm a talker mm -hmm. and I love to talk. And so I've come with James 119 where it says be swift to hear slow to speak and slow to wrath and I think I'm learning that the Lord can use me more if I'm I can share but I need to be a listener listening to people more now, as far as answered prayer I think we have to remember Sometimes living their own lives, and we're, and we're kind of making the wrong decisions in our lives. Sometimes your prayers aren't going to be answered. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it has to do with your your personal life your and your personal relationship with Jesus, mm -hmm. as to if you're going to have answered prayer or not. Mm -hmm. So keep close to Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and you'll experience answered prayers. Is there any books or resources that you recommend? Because prayer is something a lot of us as Christians, we know about it, but sometimes we have this superficial understanding. And I know I've been guilty of that. Do you have any um, books you recommend, any resources, um, any favorite spirit of prophecy, anything that stands out to you? 
I, I knew you were going to ask me that, and I have been thinking about that, but I think the main thing that has been beneficial to me is my growing in my Christian walk, because in the beginning, I think I did just pray for myself, mm -hmm. and I didn't have that real connection that I, you know, sometimes you think you're praying and the prayers just go to the ceiling mm -hmm. and the Lord isn't listening. But I've learned over the years that God always listens with a sincere heart. If your heart is opening to him and vision him sitting in that wonderful throne in heaven, that you're actually approaching the God of the universe mm -hmm. and taking it with your whole heart. Whatever simple prayer you say, if it's just, I love you, Lord, lead in my life. That's all God needs to hear. You might want to say more. You might need to say more. But it's the simplicity of a sincere heart that I've learned in my walk that God really, really wants us to have. Do you have any answers? Any books that you read? Books that you can I don't read? know. The books we read uh, all are centered on prayer. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Ellen White is all about prayer. And all the Spirit of Prophecy books always direct you to prayer yeah. so yeah we read those books and the bible of course directs us to prayer yeah. mm -hmm. book of john and all the gospels they're prayer warriors and that's what we have to be you guys answered that so wonderfully because i think sometimes we look to a book for all our answers but you brought up a good point bev you know just talking to jesus no matter how short it is um, Bob, I like how you brought up the Bible, Ellen White, it all points to prayer. So, you know, we don't have to have all this formal education. Uh, we don't have to buy all this curriculum. You know, we can just pray to God now. Yeah. I mean, one thing I do sometimes, I, I complain about how I pray. Because sometimes I think I'm very repetitious. Mm -hmm. Like in the morning when I have my devotion and I pray mm -hmm. before I walk. I pray for a whole list of people and I say, Lord, uh, you know, am I too repetitious? But I don't think you can be. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, it's top of mind. That's what's in your heart. That's what's in your mind. Just share it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, your prayers may be repetitious, but if they're sincere, like Bev says, and they're coming from the heart, God will answer those prayers. Mm -hmm. Well, he certainly answered my prayers as I was looking for people to interview. I, I think you were the perfect couple. And as soon as I brought it up to my parents, they agreed. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for allowing me to get into contact with you. Um, I know that your story will be encouraging to a lot of people. You're welcome. Because a lot of people have been going through difficult times and some have been resolved and some haven't. So thank you. Uh, Ashley, I just want you to know I pray for you every day. I have been ever since that bad experience you had. Mm -hmm. uh, how long ago was that? Yeah. Two years? 2018, so four years ago. Four years. Boy, time flies. Yeah, I know. I've been praying for you every day. Yeah. I pray for you now and Jeff. Yeah. So God is answering your prayer. You got somebody, you got somebody in the north looking out for you. <laughs> And you look wonderful, Ashley. We're so happy with your profession and your teaching and your walk with Christ with Jeff that life has come back to some normalcy. Well, it, you know, it's better in many ways. And I know that's because of prayers, because God uses crazy things to, you know, to edify us and refine us. So I, I'm oh, actually yeah. thankful, you know, because I'm not going through it now, I can look back with joy, obviously, but now I'm thankful that. <laughs> went through that so thank you you're welcome thanks for asking us oh you're welcome and if you don't mind do you mind closing us in prayer just this was a wonderful time to get to know you and if you could just ask that god blesses the interview that it reaches the right people okay heavenly father thank you for this opportunity to share our faith with our sister in christ and our brothers in christ and lord we just pray now that you'll be with Ashley and her uh, 
program down there in her church to encourage people to pray and to just share their love with you. And Lord, we pray that when you come, you'll resurrect us, that we'll be ready to go home with you. Amen. Give us a good evening. Watch over us these coming days and let your will be done in our lives. Let the Holy Spirit reign in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.